that guy really wasn't into the anime much, but either way, yeah. it's a it's a super fun manga anime, and I, I'm just happy to see this in a game format like this. Yeah, I, I'm pretty much uh, also the same. I mean, the Philippines, it's just a really, really like iconic anime. It was Filipino dubbed as well, so there's just so many memes that have come out from that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, now we are actually seeing the pick and bands real quick. Uh, on the Locker Shot side, we got Hanamichi Kaida and then Takanori, and on the God side, Kenji Fumi, Fujima, Nobunaga, and Jun Uzami. So any quick thoughts about you know the compositions, the lineups that uh, God and Lucky Shot were able to pick up even though it was so fast. That they <laughs> I feel like God God has uh, a better sense of handling the ball with uh, point guard Fujima and uh, Nobunaga. Uh, but on the other end, on Lucky Shot, they're going with a three-man Shohoku lineup there with the three main guys. Uh, that's going to be fun. But got to watch out about that ball handling a bit on Lucky Shot's end. Yeah, I feel like Lucky Shot... I mean, I... Obviously, there might be a little bit of bias towards uh, <laughs> towards the Shohoku side, but let's go. <laughs> Jump ball is going to be happening in one second already, as there it is, thrown up into the air, immediately taken here by Upa, who is Hanamichi, throws it to his teammate for a three-pointer, but will not connect. And again, this is where Hanamichi is probably king. Also, uh, like his title is literally the rebound king, but it's still going to be a nice little uh, twofer there by the lucky yeah. shot, so a great start yeah. for them. <laughs> lucky shot quick to go out there, taking some quick shots. But as you see here, we see Fujima just passing the ball around, moving the ball. They have two good passes on that team, able to pass oh. out. Oh, what a block there, though. Indeed, beautiful block coming in. And look at that dribble control coming in from Rukawa here. Oh, the tip in as well. Not going to be able to, but still able to get that rebound. Yuji Hanamichi to that extent. And look at that. Oh. The air walk dunk. Ooh, love it. Great, Great shot. Great. Four points. Great advantage here by Lucky Shot, taking all the rebounds so far. I, I'm curious, TK. What is uh, God Vols, sorry Vols, you know, doing with Jin um, Uzami with just the the dunk? But then he passes it back to his teammates. So I'm kind of wondering why he keeps doing that. Maybe they're trying to get a better open shot. But right now you're down four. You need something, God. Oh wow! Just using a just. Ankle breaker into the dunk once again, really using Rukawa to the fullest of extent. And again, that was supposed to be a freebie. I mean, the gorilla wasn't even, oh, sorry, Zainzer wasn't even going to be, I'm sorry, Zinker? Zainzer? Isn't going to be even to block that, but immediately it goes abound. Nice little block as well. Hanamichi picks it up once again. Upas uh, going to be passing to his teammate. And once again, using that ankle breaker dunk. Ridiculous. Yeah, just, just struggling to stop Rukawa at the rim right there. And another two points. Yeah, God's got to do something like that a lot more. Just getting easy shots. Don't pass it out too often. And make their way back into this game. Okay, passes it back once again. Getting that point, uh, that pain control. I haven't really seen too much pain control from uh, the God side. And lucky shot, I think, what is it? Like 10 points yeah. have all gone for Snowflake. Yeah, Snowflake is just in the groove with that shake and bake and dunk. But God, Fujima getting back into there a little bit with his mid-range jumpers. I'm liking how they're using uh, uh, God Ao here to kind of, like you said, use those mid-range jumpers. Has to go back onto the perimeter here because you cannot shoot the ball when you, you see the uh, linings kind of just uh, bopping them right. That nice little oh. penetration onto the rim, able yeah. to get that two points. But... We are down to two minutes, four points behind. I think it's still pretty doable for God, but they definitely have to stop Rukawa or sorry, Snowflake from being able to do just that. But it is not going to be a perfect shot for him, so they got ball control once again. Yeah, it's up to God Vols right now just to hold it in the paint and maybe take some of those dunks a little bit. Not pass it out, but it works right there. Giving it to the open. So I do like how they're not greedy. God, I mean, specifically God. They're not that greedy with the ball. They pass it a lot around, but I think uh, what's kind of happening here is they're passing it too much, but maybe they're going to be able to do something. Maybe work, make it work out. And look at that. The dunk into the fake, into the layup, able to get it in once again using that ultimate. So Snowflake yeah, using that already to get that advantage for his team. Yeah, both teams using their ultimate. They're building it up and heading into a crucial stage here in this game one minute 30 left one minute 30 plenty of time they've actually just two points behind here and Rukawa wants it. oh my goodness Ooh, it was clutch what do you call that That's move clutch. again where you just kind of like dribble the ball yeah, behind you and step you back a little back bit jumper yeah 
Oh yeah, but that that's a great move by Godall, man. He's been he's been hitting the mid range jumpers, and now it's easy for him to fake and pass inside. Now he's got the green light going on. That's gonna help out the team a lot, but they need these two points just to tie it up. Wow, even <laughs> with the interference. <laughs> just a hand in the face there, Snowflake, not backing down. Oh, there you go. That green light, like you said, man, really helping them out. Gives you a nice little, um, I think, speed boost as well as stealing capability, if I'm not mistaken. But once again, Rukawa. Oh, my oh gosh. My. Just rips it out in the air. I'm loving it from Vals here. He's really stepping up. This man is just the mountain, able to just deny opponents, passing his to his teammate once again. He goes in for the fadeaway back jumper oh. and now evens it out with a minute left on the clock. And we're back, coming back down from eight. God, with some clutch plays on both ends. Uh, clutch plays is an understatement here. Able to do that once again. You cannot just do it. And it even says there on the top left, you guys saw that real quick. Five dunks already. Exactly, exactly. Passes it on to the teammate. Goes in for the dunk. Cannot be slapped away. But in terms of momentum, there is that one up here. For I believe lucky shot because they do have that um, I fir I score first the new advantage but maybe just maybe if they can block the shot right now and then get the one up or two up rather could be up for them oh, what nice a block, block from Mark. <laughs> right at the rim after the double pump but he doesn't get it for a second time I'm kind of wondering oh sorry go ahead TK now. no no we're just down to the final seconds here no team is backing down we're signing off to a great game here. Ah, uh, I, that is so, so true. I'm loving how just quick these guys are getting that pain control. I haven't really seen Upa do as much here for Lucky Shaw, but not really needing to. But look at that. They're baiting. They're wasting time right now. They know that they can actually do it because they got the Gorilla Dunk. Whoa, but they got Gorilla slapped out of the hands from Ball. And we are maybe going to be able to go into overtime here, guys. Five seconds Monster left on the play. clock. For our first game, let's see, Mark TP onto the side two, and he ultimates. Oh no, block oh, once again. Oh, block that. Oh man. And it's a draw there. Overtime. Be... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I... yeah, one more minute here in overtime. It's a bit of a quick change there, but we're still reeling from that ending. Definitely are, and look at this. I think I took like a first, like a, the first round. For them to figure out the tempo and how to block these dunkers and look at that now they're getting a taste of their own medicine lucky shot is getting dunked the bejesus out and balls on uwazumi is able to deny the dunks coming in for rukawa let's see if he can time it once again no he cannot because that Ooh, is the man, fake is... of the dunk into the layup once again that's how deadly the ultimate of snowflake can be so you really that's have to know shot. when he can uh, react as quickly as that yeah, but right now, Mark TP has been the one doing the job, and he gets the ball back here again. Can he do it again? It rims out, though. Big opportunity here for God. Big, big opportunity. They're doing the pass game once again. There's like 10 seconds on their shot clock, and they're really uh, just trying to buy as much time as possible, and they're going to be able to use Sada Hanamichi's big dunk to get that one advantage. 15 seconds left onto the timer here. There's plenty of time for God to put this maybe into a second overtime if possible. They're keeping the ball in their hands for the longest time and they gotta be careful because they can actually be, this can have to be stolen. And here he comes, Hanamichi does go for the blocks but it still goes in, we're tied. Oh, that, that had us on the edge of our seats there, been rocking it around and another draw. Man, what a way to start the event today. Two overtime sessions. Two overtimes, my gosh. I actually thought Lucky Shot had this in the bag, but now God Al does have, like I said, his green light. Going to be able to maybe hook in a steal here. You see that he is really trying to get his uh, just defense or blocking against Rukawa, and he's able to do just that. Hanamichi still is able to pick it up. There's going to be the two-pointer from the Gorilla. Not going to be uh, successful, and now they have to just uh, get that pain control. Once again, here comes Rukawa. Ooh, it's just super interesting. Snowflake was on a tear to start the game, and just lately he hasn't been able to do much. Wow. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Isn't that the ultimate, I believe, of Vals, that he can actually yeah. just slap the the ball away from you? If yeah, ever? He's, been, he's been perfecting that shot, and, and the regular box as well, just patrolling the paint there. True. Still a two-point here, and... Oh my gosh, are we actually going to be even going to a triple overtime here? Because we're seeing these teams just not give way to each other at all. A lot of free action going on. Just passing it around, looking for an open shot. 
Mark is the guy that's been doing it, though. And they get back to him again. Oh, three players at the rim. That's a tough one. The first dunk that Balls ever tried. You saw he was going to go for it. I felt that like he was going to go for it. Here it is. Jump ball once again for the fourth time, if I'm uh, counting this Yeah, correctly. we're losing count. We're losing count already. But Oh, what a block there by Mark. What a block there. Okay, passing it once again. There's a lot of you know, condition to the paint control. And I'm amazed that Snowflake can actually able to, you know, dribble as well as he can and still be able to hit those shots, even with like that much um, traffic in this uh, near the ring. But <laughs> okay, then just two for two, just punches being thrown back and forth by God and Lucky Shot. A lot of points going around. It's already up to 28, but no team is just backing down. No team just backing down. Oh, here he is once again. I honestly got to believe that Lucky Shot, the way that they've been pointing, if we probably end this overtime and go to like the scoreboard, right, we're probably going to be see Snowflake with like 28, 30 points already for his team because he's been doing <laughs> just the standard setup of doing the ankle breaker, uh, see the pass once again like that, yeah. and then just shoots right up when it's open and passes when he is just a little bit too clouded by his opponent. Still able to go through the interference, but nice little rebound there from Val. Now 15 seconds, they can actually decide to maybe burn the clock here, TK, but time is short. Let's see if they can actually clear this out now in this fourth, fifth overtime that we have. Just go to Mark, man. That's the guy that's been working. Oh, yeah, that, that's just too predictable. That. It's got to go to the guy that's been working for them, Mark, and I don't know why they keep avoiding that that guy. And we're headed for another overtime. This is probably the fourth. I'm really not sure, but action just keeps on going, that's right. I am so bad at counting. I'm pretty sure our chat is already <laughs> flaming us. These casters don't know how to count anymore. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry because there's so many overtimes oh, man. that we have been uh, you know, subjected to. And speaking of being subjected to, another two-pointer dropped down by Snowflake. Snowflake just carrying the load of offense, but that seems to be the way that they plan this game plan out. That's true. I am kind of liking how, like I said, right, that Snowflake just keeps doing it once and once again, able to bounce the ball into the net right there. Swish goes, and that's going to be a 32 to 32. I mean, this was supposed to be, we're probably supposed to be on our second or maybe even third game, but these guys have already shown that they are not going to stop at all. They're not going to do anything to kind of... Um, you know, just back Ooh. away, and another big dunk coming in from Upa, able to get that meter so back into his ultimate, and at least get that uh, two-point lead for Lucky Shot here. And another block there. God trying to get them back in the game. Oh, he's going to try to steal it once again. Uh, maybe going to try to burn the time of the green light, because that's probably one that they probably would want. And you can really see God out here able to just, or not really able, but he's trying to steal as much oh, as he God. can. But that passes is just really annoying him. And that is just filthy, oh. but Mark blocks. Surprising move after he played well there. Snowflake shifting from Fujima there. Sinkser still with Uzumi. Things are actually changing to Uzumi, my bad. So a lot of changes here. Definitely a lot of changes. My oh my. It's kind of like we've shifted once again. And there he is. Ao picks up Akira Sendo. Are they going to go for a double center here for Lucky Shot? Because that's going to mean that. that they're going to have so much um, post game. Was it? Yeah, that, that, that's. Oh, yeah. Two centers. We've got, we've got a big boy battle in the paint here. Two centers for Lucky Shot and a center and Hanamichi at the power corner for God. So I don't expect a lot of three-point shooting as we mentioned there, but let's see. Let us see. So it's going to be the Gorilla and the Eight King for a Lucky Shot. Here. Of course, we got the, uh, the point guard there for a lot of that mid-range jumpers that we're going to be probably seeing. But that, that rebound control, that uh, under basket um, control there, definitely I, I'm – Pretty scared here for God. Again, they are on the back end of this one because it's the best of three and they haven't won that first game. So they are playing catch up here. Let's see how this pans out as Chris is going to be on that uh, jump ball, able to pick it up for his teammates. And Al, is, again, is on the Akira Sendo, uses that and look at that fake into the pass onto the teammate. Does not connect it, but a tipper from uh, Hanamichi looking pretty damn good. Still not able to do the pick and roll once again. And here we go, fadeaway jumper. Beautiful. Yeah. And that's what you got to do when you pick Zendo. You got to be aggressive. I mean, he's just such a good all-around player. Just make advantage of that. 
I so, so agree. And I really like this kind of combination that they're doing, that they're using, utilizing Hanamichi to like being the pick and roller as well as the rebounder because of his, uh, you know, he's, he's just a rebounder. He's able to do that. And they do have yeah. fouls <laughs> on the Toru, who they are kind of using for that penetration underneath the basket. Yeah, he's a great offensive guy, and that's what they're going to him for. Oh, let's see. Oh, ooh, let's, oh, oh. Ooh, finally <laughs> bounces in. Yeah, well, Snowflake, Snowflake there getting back into his groove. A little bit of a different character, but still, still the main role of him. Sendo has ridiculous ball control. You probably think that you're going to be able to spot him, maybe even stop him, but he's just able to just bring that right in. I love this combination. Akira Sendo, definitely one of the uh, best characters, I think, out there. People probably, could probably, probably just shoot me up on my social media if I'm wrong. In any case, though, it is kind of showing, especially with that Hanamichi combo. And yeah, another two-pointer there from Lucky Shot, but they are playing behind the two points, trailing against uh, God here. Yeah, yeah, God just coming out to a hot start, especially God out there, just using the advantage of Akira Sendo. <laughs> I do love Hanamichi always using the uh, the oa 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 block. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a fun. That's just such a fun skill to use. Yeah, and then, right. yeah, it gets the steal there. Again, I really like how they're able to utilize Sendo. If he gets the ball, he can just like fake a pass or fake in into a pass, which is just ridiculous. Once again, there is going to be a uh, nice pick and roll. Actually, opens up the a shot for Snowflake there. Only the two pointer though, but still, that does show how much uh, beefiness there is on both Uizumi as well as Akagi. Okay. <laughs> I, I kind of feel like both teams kind of switch styles here in this game. God's going more of an isolation uh, with God, Ao, and Sendo. But Lucky Shot's more into passing with, with Fujima and Uozumi. It's just kind of strange to see. And it's working in God's favor in this game. Yeah, I, I very much definitely like it. I think uh, we didn't really catch it, but maybe Sendo was banned on game one. I could be wrong here, guys. I wasn't fast enough with my eyes to see the uh, the first pick and ban because we were talking about other pointers at that point. But in any case, though, this pick for God has definitely gifted them the one up. And this is not, like you said, right? There's a different yeah. pace that has been set here. And look at that pressure. Like, even though there's a pick and roll from Upa there, there's like a, a Sendo and Hanamichi already just kind of you know, stopping the shot, and after that, just being able to still block another one. Here we go, the turning around dunk, you can't even stop it, way too fast on that trigger. Total game changer. Lucky Shot's just got to find a way to figure out that defense. Definitely do. What? Okay, underneath the basket, very, uh, okay. Very, yeah, I'm just going to say basketball-ish. I don't know what, what I was <laughs> trying to go there. Any case, though, still a big advantage here for God. Six points behind, but one minute and 20 seconds left onto the timer. Definitely plenty of time for a lucky shot to get back here, and that is where it starts. It's going to be Snowflake with the steal, activating the green light, but how can he find that opening when everybody's just on him? Yeah, that's, that's a big block by Toru there, and... Ball's coming back, and God is just going to burn some time. Take this ultimate. What a fadeaway shot, and that is a big clutch shot there by God Valve. It doesn't... One, two, three blockers jumping up to try to deny the fadeaway jumper. How can you even try to deny that? My goodness. And now we're eight points above with a less than a minute. And Chris really utilizing Hanamichi's ability to just chase at the ball and give it all the way back to Ao. Now he's going to go for the big dunk, the Sakuragi dunk. Able to get it. 18 points. That, that should put the nail in the coffin. I mean, just the way that, uh, that Lucky Shot are playing are just so different from game one. And that, that's why they're down by almost double digits. I mean, that was a nice little play there from Snowflake, but really losing Rukawa here on the second game, I uh, definitely I feel like this has affected him. And we were kind of hoping to see a little bit more of, you know, this two center make a lot more plays, but they're passing it a lot to Snowflake. I think he has to change styles up, but 20 seconds up on the timer, not plenty of time to make something happen. Yeah, yeah definitely. That, that's going to just hurt a little bit more. It is. Okay. Yeah, that layup is blocked, but just wanted to say once again, beautiful fadeaway jumper. Uh, you see here, 
that Uazumi, Zinker, as well as Upa, they keep passing the ball to Snowflake. And again, that's great and all, because Snowflake has been really good. God, they're, they're going with the game, the lineup from their second game. Oh, oh the yeah, steal, that, though. That, yep. Oh, they're, they're going with that. They're going with that winning lineup, it seems. I don't think Chris is going to change up from what he selected in that recent game with Haramichi, but let's see. God, though, changing up a little bit. Changing up a little bit. Upa going with Haramichi instead. Oh, Chris yeah. with a little bit of a change up going with Naito Tetsuya. Bit of a dunker, but I think it's kind of a similar style to Hanamichi, though maybe not as much of a rebounding sense. But let, let's see how that works out for God. Yeah, I'm not as versed with Naito, but I do know that he does have, he is a very, what do you call this, energetic, nimble dunker. So yeah. he should be good in terms of like, uh, you know, post control as well as being able to chase for the ball if it does a fumble. I, I'm pretty sure that's not a term. In basketball, but if it if it just rolls around, he can chase it as quickly as Hanamichi. So this is probably what they're gonna try to do to counter the pick from um from Lucky Shots Hanamichi pick there. But still, though, uh, I think the, one of the most important things here, God uh, was able to still pick up uh, Sendo, which has been a key pointer or a key player in that second game for them. For sure, and there there he gets the ball and immediately right out of the bat doesn't knock it down this time. That's still their possession. A lot of these fadeaway shooters coming out from Lucky Shot, and it's not working as well at the very start, but that was supposed to be a dunk from Zinker. Again, I'm just going to be cautious about that, but they are giving it to Snowflake ever so often. Let's see, Zinker, okay, passes once again. And I do like how Lucky Shot now, they're not as um, kind of one-sided. Maybe they are going to try to make something happen, but they do have an open shot. Two points for yeah, the shot. They, they like to pass it around, look for the open shot. I did see an opportunity where, where they were kind of wide open and didn't take the dunk. That was weird, but mm -hmm. it worked out. It worked out. Worked out in the end. Let's see how Sendo's going to be able to do it. But that double block coming in from Uzumi as well as Hanamichi. Upa able to just kind of figure out that he was going to go for the under, uh, over under. In any case, once again, okay, trying to go for the drive, but gets blocked by Chris. Doesn't want to get blocked once again. Has to pass it up. Goes again. Goes for the layup, and that is beautiful assist there coming in from Zinker. Yeah, just great patience. Just looking for the right shot. As long as they can keep it doing and lock it down on defense, they're, they're good. Ao is starting to lose a little bit of steam in this sec uh, in this third game. Able to still get that two pointer because of Vals. That was a such a contested shot, but able. To sink it right in now let's see how they are going about this i do like how they're doing a lot more pick and rolls and opening up a lot more avenues for snowflake here to find that opening which he does and they do have to play uh fight for that rebound to maybe try to make something happen oh Ooh, another fade away there by ow and he is starting to heat up but one thing has changed is that i feel like chris doesn't really have been has been much of a factor so far in this game as opposed to when he was playing Hanamichi in that second game. Yeah, he hasn't really contested as many shots, but uh, I think he's just preoccupied by the other players here rather than just uh, Snowflake, who has been kind of, uh, I think for the lack of a better term, just focused on, on that second game. In any case, oh, going to try to maybe go for the three-pointer. Now he just baits everybody out to chase him down as they try to open up a little bit more space, which they do, and that goes right in. And this change of strategy, TK, working for Lucky Shot. Yeah, Snowflake just getting into the into the rhythm. I feel like he wasn't as aggressive or didn't feel comfortable in that second game, but trying to starting to find his groove. Yes, best term to actually go for it, groove. Able to just find it as they need to. I'm pretty sure we're about to hit some ultimate uh, timers right now, so they might be able to hit some in. Val is not just moving anymore. He's just underneath the basket. You know that he wants to play for the rebound as he's allowing his teammates to do elsewhere. Two minutes, uh, two seconds on that shot clock, and it's going to get picked up by Vals once again, giving a second time, second try here for Snowflake to make something happen. And he picks up the ball, but actually gets misses. Now, Vals into Sendo. Let's see how he can do this. Excellent pass. Go maybe for the fadeaway jumper. Let's see if they can do it. And that oh. was such a contested shot, able to still get the two. Uh, that's a bit of a hurtful play there by Lucky Shot. They overpassed too bit, too much. And, but they get it right back here in this play. And that's what's got to happen. I feel like Lucky Shot has been pa passing around a lot, and they just got to be a bit more quick in that in the shot clock. Agreed. Agreed. Oh, there it is. There it is. 
Oh, turn around dunk. You can't even stop it. Way too quick to pull that trigger, and we are 10 to 10, but that was an ult expended there for Sendo just to even things out. All right, we'll try to go for the jumper once again. Nice little block there from Ao as he just goes around. Ball fumbles in, picks up by Hanamichi Pitt, passes immediately, and here we go. Sakuragi dunk for the advantage. How many seconds do we have? Less than a minute on that timer, but we are still neck for neck. And here we go. Fade away. Oh, you can't even stop it. Oh, just, go just in. gotta count that in. Just gotta count that in. We're down to the wire again, tied with less than a minute to go. This is gonna be a fun ending for sure. Ah, oh, man. Fun ending. Probably the understatement of the century here. As <laughs> we are just going ham and ham. Enter. Oh, sorry interfered shot here but he does still have that green light able to go in like the flash of course 30 yeah, seconds on that timer using that speed able to block it once again or actually pass to the teammate goes in for the fadeaway jumper and now it's contested oh, but still that. contested not enough two points that advantage is cool. for that is cool they just passed it around and finally got the shot they wanted he definitely did they used every single like second like they like they just like <laughs> devoured all the yeah. seconds of that green light just to get that Ooh, shot in was, anyways was, now they're getting up to the uh oh no they have possession of the ball that, they have to try to yeah, steal this that, that's tough that's tough for god that's oh, tough no. for god think so with a clutch we'll see in any case <laughs> shohoku picking up nobunaga as holdem is gonna be kenji fujima and kazushi that's not akira sendo they had just they just have the same haircut it's a different <laughs> uh guy altogether, guys so don't worry uh, yeah, on yeah. Hold'em's side is Night at uh, Fujima. That's it. That's Thai language for you guys. On Noob is Kasushi and Ikaku is Takenori. So, big balanced lineups on both sides. It's a little bit of inside out, but still no really big time three point shooters. You have a lot of defense there on, on Hold'em's side, though, with Kasushi. Kasushi. Mm -hmm. Now, we are just kind of waiting, loading in to our first game in this best of three between Shohoku and Hold'em. Well, I'm curious, first and foremost, I haven't uh, met with any of these teams yet, guys. And I'm wondering, <laughs> what was going to the minds of Shohoku when they picked this? And they even go for home court. So if they lose this oh, game they, one, they <laughs> I am just going to be baffled. <laughs> <laughs> they get home court for sure. Okay going to be starting off this game already of course with the jump ball giving up up to noob who is uh, getting a nice nice little pick and roll not able to be blocked out and that's going to be the first two pointer of the game giving it back out to shohoku who is going to be charging right in give it to nice bean pass. bad th who is why not passes on to his teammate once again and does get blocked out that is some jumping prowess there from noob definitely yeah, as I mentioned, that guy's a blocker, and that's why they chose him. And right, right at the start, they're they're just off to a good start. And I hit there with another mid-range jumper, up by four now for Hold'em. That is probably the most like dangerous thing that you can ever give is to. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, who? How do you sp uh, how do you press an F Kenji again? Nigh head. Nigh head. Nigh head. Nigh head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Nighthead here <laughs> is doing that uh, double dribble into the fadeaway jumper or backstep jumper, which is definitely always such a dangerous thing to kind of allow him to play out in the open. But hold him so good, and we're, we're just breezing by six points already. Yeah, I feel like they really have good chemistry with each other, just running to the right spots and passing him right there. But finally, Shohoku gets on the board a little bit with Araki's mid-range jumper. Mm -mm. Oh, contested though. Immediately passes. That is just deadly to say at the least. And look at that block from Why Not. Definitely Why Not be able to block that. Lots of uh, contestion there as I believe Nighthead was trying to hit that shot once again. Goes in for the fade back, or sorry, for the fade away. Not going to be able to connect. Beanbad has to bring it, bring it out of the perimeter. And here he comes with the dunk. Never mind. Just gets blocked once again. And if you don't try to do it even just once, people are going to get conditioned that you always are always going to be passing that. And it's a layup for the Gorilla. So that's going to be 2-8 to eight with Hold'em really getting in control of this game. Yeah, it's not hit doing a lot of good passing. Great assists to get his teammates open. Oh, there we go. That's a wide open shot. Mm, he just he goes go back and forth in that, uh, on that rim, but still does connect. And the opponent serve. It's going to be uh, Shohoku here trying to get the one up once again. But what? 
What? That is some ridiculous just, height on that blocking. Yeah, and Nobunaga does have those halves to block from far away. Just take utilizing that skill very well. Wow. That was a quick drive into the side, able yeah. to just hit a two-pointer. And they're really yeah, kind of stepping back up here. Yeah, TK. Yeah, that, that's just surprising to see uh, Shohoku go to Araki as the focal point of the offense. I didn't expect to see that a lot of that from the teams. It is working, though. It is definitely working. Jackup has done a lot of good things here, but there is a, like, basically have to get half the points of your opponent to get it back up. They opened up everything for being bad, but... Okay, fumble on the ball. He able to pick it up once again. There's going to be the green light, but... Nighthead, he, he was trying to steal the ball, which opened up the opportunity for Jack up there to just go into the side with a, for a freebie. Once again, with a nice little pass there here. Nighthead, once again, beautiful passing, and that's going to be allowing his teammate to hit that jumper on the left side. And Shohoku playing catch up here, TK. This is not looking too good. But I do like the size up into the shot. Able to use Oazumi for the first dunk of the night. We were looking yeah. for that. And finally, we are able to witness it. I, I was actually waiting for him to pass out on that. But finally, we get to see a dunk. Yeah, again, I'm like, when will he dunk? Because nobody is expecting him to try to go for that jumper. But there it is. Two points yeah, from light. the get-go. Yeah. yeah, green light just allows him to take that shot more confidently. Hits it in. Little bit cautious of the gorilla near the ape here. Passes his back right out. One minute left onto the clock. Plenty of time. And they're giving it fadeaway jumper once again. Oh, I'm loving it. Sorry, step back jumper. And it is working to a T. Four points behind, but definitely workable since there is still a minute on that clock. But you got a taste of your own medicine? Yeah. Yes, it will. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Plenty of time to break away as well. Oh, oh. Passes it. Open up. Mm, interference, but it might be able... Oh, he just pushes everybody back. Oh, three-pointer wide open. And the first three of the night, not going to happen. Okay, passes yeah, it back that, once again. 45 seconds on that timer here, TK. But the clock is ticking because they're, they're trailing by the six. Clock here. Mm, they're yeah. just going to burn the clock here. To be national champion. Oh, no. And that's, that's a tough dunk there by Hold'em. Just to get him up to eight points. Time is running out. They have got to figure this out quickly. Well, a quick dunk like that can definitely help them kind of, uh, uh, you know, shorten the gap here just a little bit. But like you said, they're just going to burn the timer right now. 23 seconds, six points. There's not a lot of opportunities here. And you can really see that they're just passing the ball. They're not even trying to look for that opportunity. And they are just bringing it all around. And that ball will just fumble inside the net. And 14 to 22, I don't think there's going to be any chance. What? Game number two yeah, already. That, that just hurts. That just hurts when you play defense for like 20 solid minutes and it just rolls in. And I think that should be the end of game one here. We'll see what Shouku does to regroup for game two. Let's beat that. Oh, wow. That's an ultimate as well. And time's going to... Let's see if someone picks up a shooter here. But no, Mr. Mushroom going with the same guy. Ujima. <laughs> He's, he's comfortable with that dude. See who Shohoku picks. And being bad, still going with the same guy. Yeah, the, both teams feeling comfortable. Let's see what Jack up picks up. Yep, uh, do we see a three point shooter there? Nope. Nope. What do you think? Are they going to go? Uh, I don't Araki know. Again? I mean, they could, oh, but man, it's still going to be man. the same lineups for both yeah. of our teams here. Interesting, interesting. Interesting. So they feel they feel like they're comfortable with how they play. This may be a little bit of a change of in-game game plan. Let's see yeah. how Shoku does. I could be also wrong here, TK, but uh, I think we did get... Was it a, um, a kind of quick note yesterday... We were doing the rehearsals, right? That these teams are using their uh, their personal accounts, yeah, so that yeah, means so... that uh, you know whatever they have um, banked on in terms of the characters, what level, uh, what character they are able to level uh -huh. up. Maybe that's why we're seeing here uh, Shohoku kind of again relegated to using the Iraqi. So they yeah. have to make this work out if that is the one that he was able to put a lot more uh, emphasis on when he was playing this game. 
any case, oh. though, just the setup with the alley-oop dunk starts it off real well for Holdem. Yeah, we haven't seen that much of the alley-oop dunk from Akagi. Uh, just use it to perfection there. Passes it up, goes for an excellent pass once again. But again, these passes are great and all, but it really is wasting a lot of time to open stuff up here for, uh, for Shohoku. And again, they're not able to pick that back up. They're going to try to maybe go dunk it back in for the tipper. Not going to happen. Does go for the fa uh, for the step back jumper there for Nobunaga. But like you said, he is an attacker. He is a jumper. Or sorry, dunker. And if he doesn't try to dunk, maybe his uh, stop just goes a little bit down. Hold him. Gets four points already. Yeah, hold him. Just picking the pieces of the Shohoku defense and getting easy dunks. Shohoku's just got to settle for those mid-range jumpers. But they they've got to figure out their defense. How to stop those inside passes to Ikaku. How are they going to try to stop this? And look at that. That was just beautiful. Uncontested at range. Shohoku uh, able to get that two points. But again, they're trailing. They're trailing. But maybe this is it. Look at how high that block is. Oh, they're just blocking everything inside. Swatting everything away. Okay, passes it once again. That was an intercept, uh, the interfered oh, shot here, and look at that. So quick here from Mr. Mushroom to really just sprout out from the ground and try to open things up, pun intended, and look at that, passing it on to his teammate. <laughs> this is just, a, I would just say, a overall strong team that they've really built around uh, this Holden roster. Yeah, they're just dominating on all ends, putting a clinic here, just doing everything right. Even when they miss, just gobbling up the rebounds. Hold them, just dominating. Okay, let's see the drive into the fadeaway. That's a wide open shot. And swish! Ten points already for Holden. So cool. has got to push up the energy level. Again, he was afraid about that. We haven't really seen much of the dunks, but again, they're afraid to try to go for these dunks because you can get blocked just like that. Why not? I do like his... Um, his ferocity to try to make that happen, but how do you try to go about that when your dunks and your two pointers are always just blocked? That is difficult. Three blocks, three blocks in that play just alone is just amazing defense here by Holdem. All right, wow, that could actually almost go in if they probably just allowed it to do so. And Still, they Ikaku. get the offensive rebound, yeah. Yeah, just keeping the play going. They can burn some clocks. They're just toying the show crew right now at this point. Oh man, that's ridiculous. They're like uh, ten points already. Shoku has kind of lost their uh, their luster. There, finally a dunk in, but still many many points behind. Hold him here. Who we'll still do have the green light for Mr. Mushroom again? Swish and flick when Guardium Leviosa. I don't know where that <laughs> popped out. Anyway, still so 14 points for Holdem. Just dominating on all ends, Mr. Mushroom. The blocks, the shots, the passing. Just an overall point guard, able to do the shooting himself and then open up. Uh, you know, open up avenues for his teammates also doing shooting themselves being bad here though oh what a block that was out of nowhere they're just blocking everything inside i can't wait to see the statistics after the game how many blocks they have here look at this they're just burning the clock already they know what's up here and they're gonna go for the last layup there of course it's going to be the eight and second violation but it doesn't really matter because there's like 12 points ahead here for Holden, they're, I feel like they're burning the clock as of the moment. They're really just kind of putting the pressure to the, you know, to their opponent. And that dunk, even though it looks so flashy, it's way too slow. So it's yeah. easier, I feel, to block right now by Ikaku. Man, just hold them. They, they can't do anything wrong right now. It is their game to lose. Just get the ball and just hold on to it at this point. Finally able to squeeze through the D and uh, just, you know, kind of get that two points in. But again, the effort is there, but the, the result's not popping out here, TK. What can they do? Oh, wow. Even through the counter ult, he still gets the dunk. Oh, insult to injury. Yeah, just rubbing salt into the wound and still continuing to not let up. Hold him going down to the final seconds. 
the tipper as well. Not going to go in actually here, but Beanbad, what can he try to do there as Ikaku was primed and ready to deny? He's going to go for the pass once again, opens it up for Noob, passes it back out. Nice little interception as well, able to bring it back all the way around. The four seconds on that clock and not going to even be able to squeeze. I'm liking this. All right, picking phase, Hanamichi, Kenji Fujima, and Takenori. For Soul of Soy, we got Uizumi, Keita, as well as Roji so uh, Rukawa rather and Ryoji so we do have a lot of um, passing presence for Soul of Soy here but with Lucky Shot that's actually also the same thing but a lot more emphasis on that rebound as well as that pain control so let's see how this pans out as Lucky Shot and Soul of Soy will be butting heads in our first best of three in round eight here TK. Yeah I like how Lucky Soy and Snowflake are just sticking with Fujima it's been something that, as we've been mentioning, has worked out for the teams that we've seen. But an interesting pick from Soul of Soy, they're picking a defender like Ryoji. Maybe that'll counter Snowflake a bit, and maybe that'll work to their side. Oh, I'm loving the beats here. All right, let's go in for the jump ball already. Two, one, and here we go. Okay, so the ball will be uh, in the hands of Lucky Shot and immediately tries to go for that pain control. Um, do you have Upa being set out? Severe interference indeed, but we have the King of Rebound able to pick up the ball back up once again, opening up the Snowflake who will be interfered once again. And I do like how Bunkin', Bunkin Sass is able to stick the Snowflake like a uh, like gum on a shoe and he is able to just deny every... Oh, already Ooh. three shots denied or at least uh, interfered there. But I mean, like, the playing style of Lucky Shot here is just clear. So you'll play, just take, take the shots, you'll make it. If you don't, the other two guys are going to gobble up the rebounds. Yeah, it's showing how the King of Rebound is able to just, you know, utilize his ability to just do that. And a lot of ankle breakers, but uh, Hanamichi was there to kind of just absorb the charge. The pick and roll once again, the open shot, but it was still too dicey to actually be successful enough. They're going to try to open it up once again. And Fujima just barely misses the net there. Almost able, but now still once again, Soul of Soy really digging deep and trying to open stuff up. And there it is. A lot of the, uh, the ankle breakers from Rukawa. Let's see if he can open things up. What was that? <laughs> so much fancy ankle footwork. Oh my god. Yeah, I was just caught watching him and barely knew what was going on. Great moves there. Finally getting the points on the board. I yeah yeah go ahead. <laughs> lucky, lucky shot, man! It's just Snowflake taking the shots, and the other two guys just grabbing the rebounds. It's gonna keep on working like this until until Soul of Soy figures out a way to box out. Yeah, you know I have been uh, focusing a lot more on leveling up my Miyagi, and I'm kind of regretting that decision. I should have maybe just saved up for Rukawa because he seems like he's more <laughs> like over all around just ridiculous. Like yeah. look at that he. He's able to block as well a shot from Hanamichi, the pick and roll as well to the open up, and that's not going to be connecting. We are just nail biters here, and we've already just started 4-2. to There hasn't really been much. Oh, my. That movement speed, it's like the flash in the slam dunk. It's ridiculous. And open oh, wide shot. Estimating. If it does not connect, I'll slap myself silly. It does, though. 4-4. <laughs> four to four. Oh, this is a fun game so far. It's just trading blows on defense, on offense. Ah, pass it on. There it is, the open jumper. And that's going to be the two up for Lucky Shot. Honestly, I have no team that I'm rooting for right now. Both are so uh, entertaining to watch. He was able to block and kind of stun the ankle breaker there. But a nice little pass back in, a nice little pass back out. And again, there it is, the ridiculous footwork once again. Pass it on for the center control. But there's only a set amount of time before you can get your hand stolen. And Hanamichi does it once again. Upa. It doesn't seem like he's such a, a big part of Lucky Shot, but he's still able to open things up with steals here and there, as well as those ridiculous rebounds. And, wow. The game plan. The game plan for Lucky Shot is just so simple. I mean, Snowflake's going to make those shots, going to hit. Upa just has to focus on those rebounds. But, <laughs> ooh, for the other side, for Soul of Soy, this Bankum Kassas dominating on the offensive end. Wait, I did not see what uh, ultimate was used, but doesn't matter. Snowflake hits another ridiculous jumper. Now, finally, Impossible. a two 
uh, shot advantage, four points advantage uh, specifically Watch here, out. guys. Rukawa, the ankle breaker, but he's still not able to pierce through the D there, and it's not looking too good. He oh. still <laughs> forces it through, and the dunk connects. Okay. The self alley -oop off the bounce. Bankum Sas is just dominating, but his teammates need to pick him up on defense here. They just really need to figure out. I am rebounding. Oh, man. Oh, Offensive yeah. rebounds, offensive rebounds are just going to hurt. They are going to be hurting. A lot of contested shots, but with that green light, these interfered shots, they're, they're just like, you know, kids brushing on your shoulder. It doesn't matter. <laughs> My goodness, it seems like Lucky Shot have finally find their foothold here. They're four points Lord. in, but Rukawa, Rukawa, he goes in and gets that dunka, and he was he's going to be <laughs> able to at least shorten the gap once again to around two points Rukawa. for 40 seconds on that timer, but the slap out from the hand and now opens up for Lucky Shot once again. Still, the green light is on to Snowflake here, who goes in for the interception, but it does not matter. And that's a big play. Just push this game to a four-point lead. Bankum Stas has got to do something, and they do it again. But they need to pull it up on defense, man. 30 seconds, 30 seconds here, TK, and the clock is... T Ooh. Oh, oh, that, oh, that's okay. the MVP. That's the MVP. That is the reigning MVP, and I, if this keeps up, he's going to do it again. A lot of those ankle breakers really being used. And the first time that Mint tries to go in for a shot, denied. It's going to roll right back in. But now, since it's going to be the opponent to serve, they have to steal the ball in just a matter of two se 12 seconds. They have to chase at it right now. They try to fumble the ball, pick it up, and try to shoot it within less than seven seconds as of the moment. I think oh, they can oh, do they it. The ball, oh, they get oh, the ball. Oh, two seconds. Oh, the final shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. No. Oh. So they're not going to pick up the Rukawa anymore. But okay, I also do like okay. Sendo because uh, rather than Rukawa, who does, does like to drive TK, uh, I do like how he opens up stuff in the mid range. But, you know, overall as well. Yeah, Snowflake though, changing back to Rukawa. We saw him use that in his first game, but changing back to that, let's see how that works out. And finally, we're seeing a three point shooter. Fluke taking in Hisashi. And Upa counters with the defender, Kasushi. Of course, if anyone watches the anime and manga, you know that these two, uh, Isashi and Kazushi, are longtime rivals. See if that plays on into this game. I am not as versed anymore with the anime or the manga <laughs> because it, it's been... It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been, I think, decades since I've watched <laughs> Again, it's a, but it's a classic. It's a classic. It's a classic. You know, I still know the the song. I still know that Hanamichi oh, shaves his head, <laughs> and I still remember the chant of the fangirl saying "Rukawa, Rukawa" <laughs> in the back of my head. For some reason, it has haunted me in my dreams. <laughs> Anyways, Rion and Court here, TK jump ball Let's as go. well. All right, we're going to be starting it off with Lucky Shot able to, or actually not Lucky Shot, but Soul of Soy able to pick up the ball for themselves. Bunkasas able to go in, and there's the fadeaway jumper that we all are looking for. Hanamichi tries to go in for the rebound, not going to happen, and Upa goes once again with the pass onto the Rokawa, and look at that. The turnover, Ooh, though. That's a he rare miss. Too many bodies. Yeah, a rare miss there from Snowflake. Uncharacteristic. My God. Oh, oh the, bro, I love that. They're using Hanamichi's ferocity to just rebound that ball every single time. Oh, Rukawa, sure. oh, sorry, Akira Sendo with that nice little ball control into the fadeaway jumper as well. And get that two-point start for Soul of Soy. Yeah, Soul of Soy off to a solid start. Ban Kung Sa still in the scoring position. And on the defense as well, an all-around player. Just get denied, man. Just get denied. Just accept your fate already. Snowflake has still yet to open stuff up, but again, using Akira Sendo to just slam it back to the ground. No points yet for Lucky Shot, and the defense solid for Soul of Soy. And the offense clicking too. Bankum Sass is doing everything to start this off for Soul of Soy. Okay, passing it on to Upa. Snowflake once again. He's just trying... Oh, just just shutting him down. TK, but, oh. is, is this the, like, what we've been seeing, you know, from that one game against God where everything just gets slapped yeah. away from the hands of Snowflake? Yeah, but there, finally, Snowflake gets something going, but it didn't come easy, and Bankun's house has just been doing a great job. All right, let's see how this kind of 
works out here as Bancosas is using his own drive. They're able to pass it out, bring it up to Fluke, who is trying to go for that perimeter, uh, tries to open things up. And I do like their passing prowess, but there's three seconds on that timer. Who's going to be able to pick it up? It's going to be Zinker, of course, the ape king, able to just gorilla, or sorry, who ape his way to rebounding that ball once again to the hands of Snowflake here. He's definitely sure. not a Snowflake. He's able to just break the ankles of Bunkasas. And the Donk will get denied. Get out of way from here. 18 seconds once again. Second time in a row. Just dominant defense by Solo Soy from start to finish. They're, they're just figuring it out. And it's all because of this guy, Bunkasas. See how yeah, they're going to be able to get out of this uh, tight situation. I mean, it's 4 to 2. It doesn't seem like a big gap, right? But when everything is getting blocked, and it just becomes like, how the hell are we going to be able to score here, right? But now, uh, they, oh, they took a little bit of time to get it through the perimeter. 12 seconds on that clock, and he's going to be able to th thread the needle and finally get that two points for, uh, for Lucky Shot here. Yeah, it's a low-scoring game, and any points you can get on the board is going to be so important. Maybe so important. Okay, pass it on. I just really like how Bankusas is so comfortable with the variation of moves from Sendo right there. You see, sometimes he passes it out of that double clutch, but this time he just goes for the layup. Yeah, sometimes it's just better, right? Oh, drives it in, slaps away from the hand. Fluke onto the side once again, and oh my goodness, how do you even try to go about that? The backboard play as well, and the four-point uh, advantage here for Soul of Soy. What a turn of events here from Soul of Soy. Lucky shot, just looking lost. Might need some of that luck in their shots because they're bit, oh, there we go. Not much luck needed there with that dunk, but that was much needed from Lucky Shots. Able to just go for that oh, dunk. Whoa! Woo. First three pointer finally, of the day. Finally, here. finally. Okay. But that is in the. Oh, what a block! Countering the ultimate. Just denied. Oh, even man, through man. the ultimate as well, like you said, right? Snowflake still, though, able to uh, just control the ball into that jumper sure. once again. 11 cool. 08. Okay, here we go. I oh, love it. Oh, it's, it's the spin into the dunk, able to just go around the defenders and open stuff up. My ultimate is ready. He said it. Let's see if he can get it. Yeah, that's just a beauty of a move. Oh, oh another block, five box there, as you see by our boy Banku Sas. It's making a case for the MVP. Five total blocks in this entire game. Seven seconds on that timer, and there's like five points that they have to just try to steal away from them. But the three point is just raining down. Man, you just gotta bring an umbrella here because Solo Soy is hitting all the shots that they need. And with 20 seconds on that timer, clock is ticking. Snowflake, how are we gonna be able to do it? Because Kira Sendo is here to block the day. My goodness, the fadeaway as well. Oh man, shut it down. Shut it down. Just doing everything from the block to the scoring. As Fluke just said earlier, just as you see right there, Hanumichi right off the spot. Just have to see what Snowflake goes with. Now that Banku Sas goes with Sendo. Oh yeah, there it is. We're seeing the Fujima once again and the Uizumi. So this is the standard. This is the comfort pick that we've seen. Lucky shot. Uh, enable themselves once again. The Mitsui is uh, maybe getting hovered. Five seconds left on that timer here, and Fluke doesn't really have much time. Ooh. Oh, he's gonna go for the Yuriogi, but this time it's not uh, it's not Bunking Sas on the Rukawa anymore. It's the Akira Sendo. So maybe this is something different, and it's not uh, Uzumi on their end. It's Takenori. So there's a lot more pain control. There's a lot more. Um, you know, dunking prowess, maybe even the alley oops that uh, could be used here by the connection of that Takinori as well as the Akira Sendo. Yeah, but I feel like Bankusas did much better as Sendo, not only on offense, but just his timing on defense. I just felt like he was really comfortable in timing those block shots. But it's going to be a bit more difficult uh, if he's still guarding Snowflake with Fujima because Fujima can pass out of those jumpers. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit more, he's a little bit more slippery and trickery. Uh, yeah, trickster, right? When he's going to be able to try to 
get everything uh, up in the bag. Duncan Sesto, of course, just goes uh, once again with the jumper, tries to uh, get this started early, but he's not going to be able to do that. Okay, oh, the Euro man. step pass it on, wide open shot, but... Um... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Fluke, Fluke not the shooter that they want. Passes it on once again to Snowflake here, who gives it up to Uazumi. You never, you always know that Uazumi is never going to go for that dunk, so might as well just give it back out. Opens it up, but all right, loving how Fluke is using his character here to open things up. Actually, not open things up, but deny things Ooh. for a lucky shot. And once again, it's a little bit of that PTSD, deja vu, 18 second violation. Yeah, three blocks in a row, one, two, three, stopping the defense and immediately hitting on the offense. Great start once again by Solo. So this is how they started game two, and this is how they want to keep it going. Yes. Ooh, first time we've actually seen a Fujima, or sorry, uh, Kajima uh, layup there. All right, let's see how they're going to be able to pass this around here. Going to go blocked immediately by Uazumi, but picked up by Snowflake. Let's see if Lucky Shot finally has the opening that they want and the pass up. And there it is, the block once again. Bunking Sass, like you said, TK, really on point with that defense. Yeah, Solo Soy just putting the two bodies on Fukushima, actually, but it doesn't work that time. Finally gets a shot through. Such a contested shot, but still able to squeeze in one of those, uh, you know, one of those two pointers. And Bukunsa is trying to do the same thing. If he try to go for the Euro step layup, it's never gonna happen. Zinker just got that defense on point. You better just go try to go for those mid range, open things up, it's which so he fun. does, and it does <laughs> connect. Yeah, he heard you. He heard you. Bukunsa probably heard you there, <laughs> taking the mid range jumper. But Zinker stepping up, stepping up on defense, definitely. Poor lucky shot, he's been important. We'll definitely win! Wow, nice so miss. Mint got the box out from everybody, but still picked up immediately by Upa's uh, Hanamichi there. Ball fumble, picked it up once again, able to use that speed boost for the take-in, and brings it back out to Snowflake. Snowflake, I think, is the is probably the unluckiest guy right now because yeah. everybody just slaps the ball away from his hand. Yeah, they, they, they've figured him out, his jump shots, his, his rhythm, and they're just blocking everything out of his hands. Wow, able to go once and attack the rim and still, through the defense of Lucky Shot, sneak one in. Now, the ring spat it out, and the ring will not like it, so try again, Can ladies and gents here. Soul of Soy does have a two-point advantage, but they're looking to get more as that wide shot connects from Booking Sass. And in a game that is as close as this, getting a four-point advantage yes. is crucial. Bankum Sass doing a great job, and once again, with that block on Snowflake, it's two difficult games it's there from our former my MVP my from the past hand. round. It's either a block, an interference, or more likely a severe interference that is really reducing or um, I think just interrupting the tempo this of Snowflake here. Like you said, there's speed. nothing that he can really do. Oh my goodness, oh, that's out of the hands though. He was able to ankle break Snowflake. He was able to dodge all the defenders, but Zinker was prepared to grab the ball mid-air to deny. The long range jumper from Snowflake will not connect to the rim or will not swish the net. And this is just looking better, or sorry, worse and worse for a lucky shot. If they're for only four points behind, but that is two Come or four on. monumental points that they have to climb back out. Finally finds an opening, and we're six to eight. Now that's a nice one by Lucky Shot. They really needed that, but what? now Zinxer needs to step up on defense. It's and Bankum Sas rolls that one in. That hurts. It's only 50 seconds to go. Impossible. And that ball was flirting with the rim a little bit, but he gave it in the end. All right, it's fine, it's fine. Now we're going to be just uh, playing on the side here. They're burning a lot of time. They know they got the advantage here, the A. And they're just <laughs> they're just kind of just, yeah, playing keep away with the ball here. And they open it up once again. Filthy stuff coming out from Bunkin Sass. Well, it's just great tactical play here by Solo Soy. I, I don't know if they, they planned this from the start to play with kind of a different strategy in game Let's one. Go! But it looks like they're going to finish it off here in the deciding game. Can he even stop the ball or the dunk there from Sakuragi if he has that ridiculous animation? Because I feel like you can. So. <laughs> he changes the perspective of the screen. Anyways, 
We're going to try to do the same thing, but slapped once again by Zinker. And that three-pointer will not connect. Now, eight seconds on the clock. I don't think there's much time. They have to try to go about it. But no, block once again by the total of five times. Block once again by the total of six. We are seeing a lot more people focus on the Hanamichi as the first pick every single time. I think his stock as a character really is just really high in terms of like the defensive capabilities and the rebounding abilities of Hanamichi. So um, priceless for any team. Yeah, and also Fujima as well there paired up with Kazushi for a year. And on Kaito, Kaito Kids and they're going with some sweet shooting. And Toru at the center, Hisashi for win number one at the shooting guard. Let's see what Tatum's goes with. They're going with another big man there, interesting. Maybe going with win number one as the shooter and the other two centers to just pick up everything that rims out. Interestingly enough, we're not going to be seeing a real attacker here. I think uh, what Kaido Kids have here is, again, we saw this earlier on, I think on the first series with God, with the double center, but it didn't really pan out as well as we were hoping for. And maybe with this one, Mikado kind of Kids, it's going to be a little bit more different because they do have that uh, long-range jumper uh, that they did pick up. Now for Yerm, it's kind of like this, uh, kind of like the different thing where we don't really see a center, but since Hanamichi mm -hmm. is so strong on that rebound, he kind of just acts as a center himself. Yeah, for sure. We saw a similar lineup earlier, and it worked out. Uh, let, let's see if it works out for Yerm. Let's see how this uh, goes out for them as they do pick up the ball immediately. Shoots it back out. Hanamichi, there, like he said, gets that uh, stock of his for that rebound. Passes it on to uh, Fujima. Yeah, Fujima. And hits that two pointer. Yeah, Fujima's just so good at that mid range level. And <laughs> they just hit each other right back. Toru is such a good offensive center just for that mid range, and he does well around the rim. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Toru is. The flex is pronounced is uh, is dubbed as the flexible center. So yeah. rather than being a center that's like ridiculously strong on the post, right? Um, yeah. He does have a lot of flexibility playing at the mid range as well. So you better be damn well sure that he's going to be able to hit those shots as of the moment. Bossa playing with the pick and roll, able to hit the mid range jumper once again, and starting it off really good for Yerm. That is going to be an interfered shot right there for Mitsui. And here once again, we do see Bossa just uh, trying to penetrate everything else. And such a quick pass into the two-pointer. Yeah, it's just really gelling in really well here with these three characters. Up by six now. Yeah, and that, that's not just going to work out. Quick shots uh, that were really interrupted. They, they just need to figure out a better game plan on offense. Oh, wow. The... It was a little bit tight, but able to force it right in. 10 to 2, really working in the favor of Yerm here. And we're seeing a just, um, how do I say this? A really aggressive uh, amount of passing, which is working in their favor, to be, to be honest. And look at that, the step back jumper. It's so deadly. I think two out of three shots have already connected. Granted, the third one did not, but still is an option that's been uh, quite utilized here by Yerm. Yeah, but anything that is missing, I mean, Hanamichi seems to grab it right up. He does it there, but it, that, that's been working out so far. Now they're going to be using the center. Lots of uh, lots <laughs> of length on that height of his, but not, of course, going to matter up against Tusek with the Kazushi. And here we go once again. Mitsui maybe trying to go for the two-pointer. Not going to work out. And I love it. The distance, the height on Toru just showing up how he can really attack that rim uh, with the two-pointer. Uh, jumpers. Yeah, even up against a guy like Sakurangi, it escapes the block and they get it on offense. Two sec with another two points for Yerm. A comfortable lead right now with two minutes to go. We should be hitting some ultimates pretty damn soon. That's a wide open shot and the three pointer to connect. Yeah, that might open up some things for Kaito kids. Three pointers are a game changer. Okay. Pick and roll once again, opens it up, gets interfered, shot, somebody has to pick it up, but Sakuragi once again with the rebound, opens it to, oh man, Fujima. We've seen a Seven lot of points. that, just, just Sakuragi grabbing rebounds and getting back out, that, that's just something that keeps getting up the points for Yerm. 
that's, oh. and that's, that's what it is, right? When you have that rebound, it's like a, a do-over for trying to get another point in. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. You are seeing the centers able to at least score up as well. Oh, whew. This is just filthy sweet for Yerm here. One minute and 30. I mean, there's still like seven points lead and there's still chance, but it's so difficult to try to do something uh, against that. Hanamichi already seven rebounds. I think that might be the most we've seen tonight. Just times that jump so perfectly as the ball is coming down. Oh. That's a contested three-pointer, or rather interfered three-pointer. Still the green light, and he was able to just mix it up in the batch and shoot it as it goes. 11 points lead for Yerm. 20 points is just so high for a team, and only one, uh, still one minute left. It's great scoring from Yerm. And another rebound by Petsch Tanatorn. Well, he's able to just, look at that, being able to just go past these defenders so quickly and then passes right out to Hanamichi who does have the Sakuragi dunk. Well, yeah, be sweet. He's, he's been gobbling up the rebounds, doing the dirty work. Might as well give him a bit of a dunk here and there and get on the scoreboard. Finally goes in, but that's like 11 points behind. 42 seconds though. Maybe, just maybe there's a chance here. Able to play with the pick and roll and just open things up. Nobody was even near the basket. Everybody else from Kaido Kids trying to go for that man-on-man -man defense, but when you allow the pick and roll, it just destroys everything, opens uh, avenues up, goes in for the three-pointer, but it was just a, dr a high dream to even try to connect that. Yeah, win, no win number one was trying to go for the three because they needed that, but still, Bossa with the timing on the block. These passes as you jump out, how do you even try to deal with this? Oh man, missing an ultimate there, but... Just the precision of play right now by Yerm. They just play so well on offense. I mean, that helps, but definitely not enough to kind of, you know, bring them back in this uh, third game. Nice little dunk as well, and uh, yeah, five seconds on the timer. It's not going to be enough. Just a dominating way to start this series from Yerm. There for Yerm. Not Tatum's. Takes away Hanamichi with that first pick. Yeah, it seems like Jerem's gonna stick to their normal game plan. What do they have here? Uh, for Jerem, they're already looking at Takenori to even things out, and that just kind of makes sense. It's their game strategy already, but oh, cool. okay, Man. finally we got ourselves an attacker here with. Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Kaido Kids is going with a completely different direction from game one, going away from two centers. Now they have one attacker in Rukawa and, and just two defending uh, power forwards there to counter what should be a similar pattern of strategy for here. Definitely should be. And now hopefully Hanamichi uh, shows his stock here and gives Kaido Kids the much needed pain control that they want and then allow our Rukawa to just go for attack because we've seen Rukawa in the hands of Lucky Shot just play out of their minds. And now we're just uh, loading up for a second game here, guys. Let's see. Show your support in the chat right now. Who do you think is going to be able to win this? It's going to be Kaido Kids or Yerm coming to this second game in our round eight. Yes, sir, Kaido Kids back against the wall. They need to win this one to stay alive in the series. Stay alive in the series and maybe even get a chance to get that first place and 100,000 vouchers. My goodness, that is a lot of moolah. Big block coming in from Petch there as he is able to just deny the ball now up to his teammate. Goes back out, passes it on, goes in, but Hanamichi's hua hua defense really is putting a thorn in the side. Still though, through all of that, threading the needle with Basa hitting the two. Yeah, Basso just picking up right where he left off. No hitches. So far in this game. Big block coming in there from Akagi. You think you're going to be able to get that dunk out? Better put in an extra uh, cherry on top just to make sure. Ooh, that pass though not working into the hands of uh, win number one, but not going to work out. Still though, the dunk from Rukawa starts it off strong for Kaido Kids. Yeah, it looks like they were struggling, but somehow they get their first two points on the board to tie it up. 
<laughs> okay. Doesn't that was last also for long. Doesn't. Fast two pointer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that didn't last for long. That tie game. Yeah, I'm going back up again. Okay, but we have an offensive game here. Teams picking up their baskets early. This is just a back and forth now. Very much different from what we saw in game number one. Let's see if it's going to be possible. Hanamichi with a quick rebound. Okay, puts it back out to Rukawa there for a possible option. But they have to bring it out the perimeter because, again, it's the half-court rules. you got to bring it out there. Goes in for the fadeaway jumper like we see from Akira Sendo, and he connects it for the four points. Sorry, six points. Yeah, the, that's a good change. As you mentioned, they needed an attacker. They picked one, and it's working out. They have the lead. Okay, too much commitment to defending Bossa. It opens up win, uh, sorry, not win one, but two sec for another uh, for another opening for himself. You gotta remember that there is two ways to score here for the side of Yurim. Actually, three if you add Akagi for underneath that paint. In case the almost fumbles the ball, gotta be careful with that. Bossa though opens up, passes back out, goes in Wafua defense, but it still almost connects. Ball is still with Yerm there after an offensive rebound by Petch. And they're still moving it around. It's just so patient. And they finally get the shot they want. Yerm's changing strategies here. They're not always giving it to Fujima anymore. Fujima is kind of locked and loaded. But this means that it opens up the possibility for Tusek to finally shine as a scorer. Very contested shot. Picked up though by Tathams. Can he actually open up more? Yes, he can. And this... This uh, brute force strategy for Kaido Kids is working, but it's barely working. Though it works still in the end. Uh, at least it's working out better than what they did in game one, and they got to hang on to that, but a little bit more defense needed. Defense needed. Two points advantage from Yurm here. Plenty of time to make magic work, and magic will, as win number one once again gets another two pointer to even right. things out. It's tight. It's a tight game. Both teams are playing a bit more stingy, trying to give up the points. Goes past Anamichi there in a quick blur. And you see him just kind of like, what happened there? Two pointers already. Now it's going to be Rukawa. You try to go for those slow jumpers. It's not going to work because Pet Sanathorn is just way too quick. On that trigger, the three pointer. And almost immediately just jumps in to get claim that rebound. And here it is once again. Almost a steal as well, but able to pick it back out. But some quick steal coming in from Bossa. Passes back out. There's the fadeaway, oh, sorry, step back jumper. And 14 points. They're finally. Uh, you know, lengthening the gap. Yeah, that's a good extension of the lead there, just locking it down on defense and working it out with that pass to two set. Pressure's now on Kaido Kids, a lot of pressure, Marcus trying to figure three. it out. And there we go, pulling off the ultimate, much needed. Let's see if it's going to be worth it if they can pull off this defensive stop. Oh no, it's so close to the basket. Somebody has to try to stick on that defender. The man-to-man -man defense is much more working here than 2-1 to because it does, again, open up two sec for those possibilities. The Hua Hua defense really interfering with the shot's accuracy. And Bossa, he's kind of pincered down here, but he's still able to open things up. Now passing it a little bit more. 10 seconds on that shot clock. They have to make something happen, and they do. How is he able to do that, TK? <laughs> they were just so... Patient in just getting open that open in there, and they knew that the pressure was on Kaido Kid, so all they needed to do was just knock down another shot. And right now it's a four-point gap with barely much any time left. And there we go with another block. Kaido Kid running out of time. And that second shot can't really be said. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the slow mo probably makes it easier to try to get the block on that. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't really done it myself. Any case, though, oh no, the dunk from the gorilla himself. I mean, King Kong versus Godzilla is going to be coming out this year, but the true King Kong is already here. And they already have the lead from that King Kong dunk. It should be over with only seven seconds left. Kaido Kids will need a defensive play here, but that looks to be... They get it, actually, but not enough time left. So we are going to be seeing uh, Nobunaga here be picked up there. Uh, really a strong dunker, but we haven't really seen dunkers be that effective because the blocking timings for a lot of these players, they kind of got it locked down. You, you know what I'm saying, TK? So you yeah, yeah, got to yeah. be careful. They have to open stuff up, but uh, picking up uh, Mitsui definitely 
will open things up, especially with Hanamichi there to be able to pick up the, the ball for them as well. Yeah, WD just going with a lineup that we haven't seen tonight. On the other hand, Hoda going with what is tested and proven true. Fujima, Hasegawa, and Akagi. Let's see what WD has. Well, Hold'em definitely has played a couple of matches already, as well as WD. So let's see if they got the more in the tank to close this night out. Now, if you're watching from Thailand, guys, you can go to the Facebook page of Mineski TH. That's facebook.com slash Mineski TH for the Thai broadcast. But of course, if you speak any other language and no English, we got you here on YouTube. Now let's go in for the jump ball already. Duncan Master and Ikaku will fight for the ball to get that first shot at trying to get, well, the first shot. And uh, Mr. Mushroom already picking up the ball there, try to uh, maybe open things up. Wanted to go for the quick shot there, but of course you got to open things up first. They cannot really find that opening, but as they were fumbling in the middle, Mr. Mushroom threads the needle. Well, just shoots the two. WD able to score back as well. So, uh, wasn't able to really see that, guys. Uh, hopefully, nobody from the uh, viewers can experience that as well. A nice yeah. little opener there from Noob, though. That's actually a wide open shot, but he was not able to uh, swish it in. Now, that one he does. The quick shot, really able to just... Uh, Thread it in. Hold him, though. Starting his stuff with uh, a two-lead advantage. Two-point lead advantage. Uh, yeah, let's see how WD countered. We didn't really get a good, clear view of that the first time out. But yeah, right there. Nobunaga, that mid-range jumper. We've seen that a bit from other players. Oh. You know how ridiculously powerful Fujima is, where he can just delay a shot, and even at the very last second of his shot can uh, translate it into a pass? Yeah, yeah that just so opens up so much for the offense, for the whole team to just figure things out. Even uh, goes in for a block as well. Now Mitsui here, from uh, played by Kulax, really is lacking that opportunity Ooh. to just make something happen. And Mr. J Gamer. I mean, I don't know what he was trying to think there when he was just uh, forcing out a shot, but it's not really going to work out. Passes it on to Noob for the quick shot, and he does connect it once again. Yeah, Hasegawa, the guy that Noob is playing, such an underrated player, I feel. He just does so well on defense and on offense. He can just knock down those shots that he gets from Fujima. Snaps it back around, and we're looking for a very heavy block game here. We don't really see Fujima blocking a couple of these shots when it was up against uh, Mitsui. He can just definitely do that. A lot of contested shots outside the perimeter there. They're really forcing these threes, TK. And, I mean, it's not working as well as uh, probably I think uh, WD wanted to work. Both hold them to starting out strong. No doubt about it how they made it to this round. And just the blocks on the perimeter and the scoring by Mr. Mushroom. Just a strong, strong start. But... WD still able to counter a bit, keeping it close. It is pretty dang close. Okay, the drive as well, trying to open up the space. Going to go around the Hua Hua defense. Got to be careful as well, using the pick and roll. Pushes back around. Third time, third time of charm, not going to work out. And there we go, once again, the pass. I really like the just the ability to just move the ball around a lot more. But Kulax returning the favor, bring it back around, denies the shot, opens it up once again with the pass. Three seconds on the clock, got to go oh, in for the dunk, but gets denied. Oh, and WD, solid defense. Almost a good pass and good dunk, but just solid defense by WD there at the rim. Can they capitalize on that? Bounce on the ball, picked up by Hanamichi. Kulax in a bit of trouble, has to go around. Does open up for Jay Gamer there. Once again, Kulax, he really cannot find an opening. And when he tries to go for that three-pointer, it's not going to work out. Green light is already here, and here it goes. The over-under dunk coming in from uh, Mr. Jay Gamer to even things out with the 8 for 8. Yeah, oh, no. In the nick of time, too, there. But quick counter by Hold'em. That is why they are so good. Just Mr. Mushroom stepping up each time they need him to. No, I mean, no. You gotta be careful when you got that green stuff glowing, because he is just deadly from the perimeter. If he op if he even sees like a slight opening, he will take it and it will connect. 
Again, and passing it on to the... Oh my god, that hook shot if that connected. That would have been sick. Ooh, and against the Hulax on the upper side, will still get denied. He cannot find that opening. Pass it to Hanamichi, maybe. He tries to go for the uh, interfere three-pointer, but still will not connect. Once again, goes in for the fade-back jumper, but still, they just keep forcing this time and time again, TK. Yeah, WD is just scrambling for that three-pointer, but they didn't need it. They just needed a good two-pointer to tie it up and wasted a lot of precious time. And they're, they're just running around here right now. They get the steal though. WD still has a chance to tie the game. Actually, go up with the lead, and they do. WD. It looked like they had their backs in the corner, but now they take a one point lead with time winding down. That play is a gambling play, but if it works, it works, right? They got one point on the timer, but they, okay, five seconds. Oh my goodness, they can't oh. block it. Then he overpowers the D with the big Gorilla Tonk, and now three seconds on the clock. It will get interfered, and it will- Nation of Katsushi and Kenji. I think that's something that teams are really uh, focused on as a really good advantage. Both teams going with the same lineup, actually, so they're pleased with what they, they saw of themselves in game one. So hopefully, let's see if WD is able to make a bit more shots than they did in earlier. Well, it's going to be the same matchup from game number one. A change of roster might not be what's lacking here from WD, but it's a change of mentality of what they have to do, I think, here, TK. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just need to execute a little bit better in getting Mitsui open for those threes. And if they're able to do that, Holden might have to watch out. Let's see how this pans out now as we go for the jump ball immediately. And it's going to be started out by Hanamichi. A good start off there, though. The pick and roll. Try to open up maybe for a three-pointer. But immediately, Nobunaga dunks it down. Yeah, good start by WD. Just flew in on offense. Now they got to figure out a way to stop Mitchell Mushroom. Nice little rebound once again. Able to open things up. Passes it back. Has to go around the perimeter to reset everything, and they open up for Mr. J Gamer. Goes in for the drive, has to pass away once again as it does get blocked. And a nice little uh, uh, turnaround to maybe open things up there. Mr. J Gamer with the open wide shot, and it will connect. Beautifully started here by WD. I like that from Kulaks, just pump faking a little bit, getting the defender to commit, and getting an open j jumper from his teammate. Is that going to go in? It's not. Uh, still able to be picked up there by Hold'em, though. And Mr. Mushroom kind of uh, second-guessing himself a little bit. And look at this, Mr. J Gamer starting to uh, pick things back up as he swats away the dunk from Ikaku. WD with a chance to go up by six points. A lot denied at the rim by Ikaku. It's still a tight game. Team struggling to find their offense. So quick adjustment already. We're seeing the the fruits bear, well, the labors bear fruit there for WD though. But look at that step back or that uh, fadeaway jumper coming out from Mr. Mushroom interfered but not uh, not denied. Now Mr. J Gamer playing on the left side of the ring here, able to kind of um, play along by himself, but he's got to be worried about Ikaku who's just kind of playing around the D here, able to still pick up the uh, ball once again. And now Mr. Mushroom does pass me. Oh, another block there at the rim. Ikaku has just been getting swatted at the rim, but still Mr. Mushroom picking it up and tying the game. Okay. Mr. J Gamer, he's uh, he's done a good job at kind of opening things up. I like that pick and roll though, but still interfere. It's not a wide open shot, so uh, accuracy is not on the best of uh, terms there for them. And ooh, almost kind of forcing that one back in. Opens it up once again. Noob though tries to go for the shot, and it will connect and hold him, doing hold him things. Able to I get just that love, advantage. I just love Holdem's confidence. They just keep going at that. Just. Faking it and giving it to Noob to take those mid-range jumpers. WD with an answer. It's another close game, man. Indeed. Okay, running back. Whew. First time I don't see Sakuragi actually able to get a fumble ball there. Able to throw it out once again. And these, uh, these like, pass into the shots, even though they're interfered, it's not as... Uh, 
ridiculous though, but hold him once again. If you don't try to jump and challenge, they can hit those. Yeah, that was interfered, but Mr. Mushroom, no fear. Just taking it and knocking it down. Hold him now with the advantage. Coming down from down by four points. Oh, block at the rim by Ikaku. Just doing so good on defense. He can go over it, but that was three people jumping. 80 second violation. It could have happened. Unbelievable. But WT ran the clock. Unbelievable, like you said. Now, we're not done just yet. There's only two points difference here, guys. So if you're a fan of WD, better shout them their names already. Better put it on the chat because they definitely need this, uh, this support from you, our viewers, as of the moment. Now, they do have, they don't have control of the, uh, the ball here. And Hold'em does. And filthy <laughs> shots once again shot. coming out. That's a big shot. They just used up the clock. Now they have a two-possession advantage with only one minute to go. Kulax. This is going to be important, but it does not go down. That would have been big. WD running out of options as the ball returns back to hold him. He was able to kind of cook the ball there. And by cook, I mean kind of uh, take a breath and uh, try to you know time his shot, but it does not work out. Everybody just tried to contest the dunk, but he was just too high in the air to do so. And hold him, have now a commanding lead. Ultimate activated here for Mitsui. But I mean, again, Ooh. when you're up against so many defenders, it's just not going to work. The long throw as well for the pass almost gets stolen there by WD. Mitsui threading the needle, and they need one board to even this out. 20 seconds on the clock. They got to go for to steal. Yeah, with Mitsui, a guy who can knock down threes, this is still very much in time if they can get the steal with time running out we're down to 10 seconds in the shot clock the ball is just going around and hold him knocks down the dagger that is going to do it it should be unless they can get a quick shot off it's they cannot and game is over that's a name that is a bit tough to roll off the tongue here on a live feed but yeah we'll stick with it Cappuccino going with Uozumi, Nam Neng Rak for Nobunaga. And for B Friend, they're going to wrap it up with Mitsui and Toru and Fujima here again for Yo. And again, uh, probably as you mentioned, possibly a 100% pick rate so far in today's games. Yeah, because, like, again, he just shows how ridiculously good his stock is as a character, right? Um, yeah. You can delay your shot for the longest time it looks like it might go in but if you think it's too iffy if there's too many defenders pass it on to someone else open stuff up and that one interaction just allows you for such flexibility and it's been utilized for by a lot of the teams especially you think the ones that were able to get into the same finals now i believe the second uh, highest picker is probably going to be Hanamichi that has seen a lot of love just because of his ability to rebound that ball. And you know what they say, if you're able to rebound it, you get another shot to take a shot. So why not, right? Nice. <laughs> now on the game we go, of course, it's going to be Mitsui who's going to try to hit those three pointers. But if you don't really have that open shot, just better pass it on to a teammate because it's not going to work out. They do have Toru, Ooh. who is a very uh, reliable, you know, center that can go for those flexible shots. But when you're up against such a defensive team like Yane, it's going to be very difficult to try to open things up. Yeah, they were just blocking everything in sight and it goes both ways. Almost a minute in and no team yet on the scoreboard. Up until now, three-pointer by Missouri. We That's a rare sight to see so far tonight, but good start by B-Friend to get there. Look at that. I love the drive coming out from uh, Kojima here. And he passes it on perfectly to the teammate. Nice little rebound once again. Tries to go maybe for the dunk, but it's always going to be the pass. The open shot as well. Does hit the rim. Bounces back out. Goes in. Passes back out again. And look at that big block. Taru is such a huge beast that he can just deny these shots even from far away. This is the pick and roll again going into Toru who goes in for the fadeaway jumper but his opponent is also as big as him and that's going to be a deny once again. And are we ever going to see our first point? Actually, uh, B-Friend already gets that first three-pointer and they're working hard to just deny Yone any possibility of getting a one-up. Yeah, both teams are playing really good defense up until there. Uosumi finally throws one down. Changes the pace of the game a little bit, but B-Friends is running those double pick and rolls to get 
trying to get Mitsui open. That seems to be their game plan. It worked out for their first basket, but let's see if they can try to keep it going. They try it there, interfered a bit, rims out, but they still keep possession with Sakurangi. And they're going back there again for the double screen, and it gets annihilated again. The ball's still in their hands. Action is barely stopping, and it finally rims out back to Yone. Well, I do like their strategy, but they also got to take note that if they put all of their uh, players to do that double pick and roll, that if the rebound is there, Hanemichi is not always going to be 100% and able to pick up that ball, and it opens up the paint for such dunk plays such as that, and two dunks already coming up from Yone to get them that one point advantage. Now, I think a B friend here have to shift things up a bit because their strategy, like you said, is working slightly, but it's not working every single day. Now that shot will get denied once again, has to go in and these rebounds, I thought it's gonna go for B friend, but they really are losing to Uwo Zumi as he always has that under the basket control because Hanamichi's everywhere around, uh, along this court right now. Yeah, both teams just oh, using their know, time. Especially the ultimate dunk there by Nobu Naga gives Yone the three-point advantage. Let's see what Bree Friend has. Oh, so unable. Oh, unable. That is just unreal. Another block by Yone, and that just stifles B Friend into a corner. And another one to put a cherry on top, and they're already breaking through the defense like the uh, colossal titan breaks down the wall of uh, maria my goodness it is not looking too good here uh, another dunk now is just a pass once again and this is i mean it's a minute left under the clock but these plays just looking so damn good and finally the first ever three-pointer that i think we've ever seen for fujima players in this day has hit and that already gives a big advantage for uh, yone here yeah, Yone just figured out B-Friend's game plan and B-Friend just doesn't seem to have anything else in their pockets. Just going back to the dub screen over and over again. Yone just sitting comfortably with that block ready to play. And it seems like they're just going to cruise to this with just 45 seconds left in the game. Blocks it, but oh my goodness. I thought he was going to gonna try to pass, but he just uh, puts one in and dunks it right back. And we're 10 points already. And Yone just, like I said, running away with the victory here. My goodness, how are they going to be able to come back into this one? Maybe a three-pointer that connects, and it will. 30 seconds after the clock, they have plenty of time. Or not really plenty, but they still have time to work with. But they have to steal the ball first, and you know Yana is going to be it. milking that clock. They get it by chance, but they are not un they're unable to get that three off. Yone back with the ball, just running it out. Uh, it's going to be tough, but be friend at this point. They should probably start talking to each other how they're going to regroup for game two because the game plan in game one here is just not working against Yone. Place it out back to Utoru there and he's going to try to go for the three-pointer. It is cooked well, but it's not going to be served a mick. Yeah, it just hasn't really worked. He, he just gives up a bit too much on the defensive end, I feel, and if you can't really pair that up correctly, it's just not going to work out perfectly. Exactly. Oh, Hiroaki. Wow. I have yeah, never that... <laughs> seen this character used yet. Yeah, solid point guard, but I'm not sure. He, he, he layups really well, just slices in nicely, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to counter with Fujima. But bold one here from FR102 Gaming for B Friend. With the, their backs against the wall, they have to do anything they can to try to get one back in. Well, strategies can be very um strategic oh, i'm kidding uh there's a <laughs> lot of strategies that you can employ in a game such as this and trying everything out is definitely welcoming and maybe just maybe this roster that they picked up and play style or game strategy that they have for game number two might just be enough to break the whatever it is that yarnay have set up for themselves we're gonna go, of course, for this jump ball, but uh, nice let's see how it works out. <laughs> Mija tries to right. go for the dunk, gets denied yeah. though immediately here, as Yane is gonna be on the uh, colored side, guys. So they're the ones who are, uh, you know. Oh, nice little fade away there. Nice. I like how they were able to use the tip in from Sakuragi as well, but it's not going to be successful in netting them that, uh, that first initial point. 
B friend still unable to get on the board there, but Sakurangi doing a good job of cleaning up the boards. And there, Hiroaki, our surprise pick, gets on the board first and gives B friend the advantage. These fadeaway jumpers, man, they're using it to kind of uh, delay these blockers. I mean, that's the strength of fadeaway jumpers. You're able to kind of get out of the reach of those blocks. And then maybe, just maybe, if they can replicate that, if they can do it more successfully, that's the thing that Bifrey can use to um, to get this uh, game back out into their hands. Now, Hanamichi able to just use his speed to go in, block, and then go back into rebound. It's ridiculous, to say at the least. And maybe he can keep replicating that. Nice little bounce out the wide open shot, and Bifrey misses. That's not what you want to happen. That was a nice setup, though, with the screen, but B-Friend unable to knock it down. Hiroaki, they're going to him a lot. I don't know if that's a lot of confidence in in Hiroaki, but Sakurangi is just cleaning up everything with his hustle plays. Oh, I like the, the balls in his try to go for that three-pointer up against a shorter defender, but uh, it was just a little bit too far out for them, and... Well, let's see. Medicine be brought back. Not going to happen. Taste of your own medicine. Not going to work out. Double pick and roll there just to open things up for Hiroagi here. So and he's going to try to maybe go into the rim. I like how he broke the ankle of Uzumi there. And B-Friend. Well, well not, they're not a B team anymore. They're A. Yeah. Yeah. Surprising start. Uh, keeping Yone away from scoring somehow. And yeah, just nothing going down for Yone. Even from Fujima, the man of today's games. Of today's games, I'm loving how they're able to use this to their advantage. Once again, passes it on to the ball and the step back jumper not connecting, but you can see how free they are to actually take those shots. And uh, they got to be careful. Look at these outside jumpers, these perimeter shots. It's not connecting, but it's open for them. And they can keep doing this because Hanamichi is there for the rebound. Yeah, for sure. I mean, only a minute and a half left, and B friend just controlling this game. By just solid play, six points up, Yone might already have to be looking at what they need to regroup and do in Game 3. Hanamichi might be the first player to reach double-digit rebounds in today's games. Man, even if they try to get that paint control, it's all about the outside shots. And Hanamichi! He just does everything! What a comeback this has been from B-Friend. We thought they were out of this, and they're up by almost 10 points. And this might be the first shutout of the today's games. A comeback indeed. Finally able to get a score on the board, but they have to work tooth and nail to push the ball back out because they're six points away. I mean, a minute in the clock is definitely some time, but uh, when they're playing like this, it's going to be very difficult. Can they steal the, way, the ball away? Cappuccino, he has the ultimate to do it. The Ape King just grabs it away with his gigantic hands. And look at that. Maybe, just maybe, this is Giannis' turn to bring the ball back around. But man, Fujima is just not hitting anything in this game, not getting into his rhythm. And seriously, a surprise, Hiroaki just doing so well. <laughs> what a turn of events, indeed. 30 seconds left. Fujima should be able to go away with this one. And that guy, just a surprise. Just a surprise to close out. Oh my goodness, how are they going to be able to come back at this one? I mean, there's the green light and everything, but it's way too late. 15 seconds on the clock, and we're definitely going to go for a game number three here. They're not able to, pin, uh, you know, spread to the needle and maybe even get a shot off. 12 total rebounds on Sakuragi. P-Star has definitely brought the game back around. Oh, wow. Man. Wow. Two seconds left, but this is oh. Second runner up for third place will be getting 30,000 points per team, and the fourth sp uh, fourth spot will be getting 15,000 points per team. So that will be theirs for the no, None of these teams are, are to, uh, have an advantage here uh, at this moment, but there you see, uh, they're gonna pick the same players getting it back into the game. Yeah, so we are gonna be seeing again the Nobunaga, the Ozumi. Fujima on the side of Michi, Akira Sendo, and the Hiro Aki, who had I had such a difficult time just kind of figuring out how to pronounce. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> well, yeah, you should know now. He's been doing so well as a surprise picking of the day. True, 
that. Now, just a little bit more here, guys, and we are going to be going underway. I hope we actually still do have the same court because I think uh, the beach court was the one that we didn't really see throughout. It was the uh, other one and the Shohoku and the Ryonan one. Yeah, the beach. Uh, it's the park, park court. court. Yep. Sorry, yeah. not the beach just court. Such, such a lot of green, though. Soothing for the eyes to distract you away from the action, the red hot action on the court. Of course, as we mentioned, I think B friend is going to be getting the ball to start the game. Yeah, so they had that advantage already. Slapped it away like a hungry, like an angry oh, little ape. So and sweet. wow, what a statement from Yone just starting yeah. it up using Ozumi rather than a passer as a dunker. Yeah, there's a bit of a change up there from what we're used to seeing. See how B friend counters. Hiroaki mid range jumper doesn't go down. Yone with the ball once again, able with a chance to go up ahead by four. P-Star really on point with those uh, Hua Hua defenses. And once again, another dunk. No, pass into the dunk. That's what Yone is going to be doing. And this is what I was kind of fearing right now. Yone are already set up and prepared and they're looking mighty dang aggressive. And they're kind of changing pace on how they've been playing the game as well. Yeah, it seems like B-Friend a little bit thrown off their game. Hiroaki is not getting into rhythm, Sakurangi not getting the rebounds, but let's just see if they can change it up within the last three minutes. There we go, that's a step in the right direction. Two points already here for B-Fred. Now possession of the ball is on Yone, able to use Fujima there. Dunk, no, pass it back around. Cappuccino still has really to show his, uh, his stock here for the team. Opens up, backs away, that's an opener, and that's gonna connect six points already. Yeah, that's a bit of a change, Cappuccino. Remember, in the first game was a blocking shot machine, dropping out seven blocks. But this game turned into more of a perimeter player. It's an open shot is, as well. Oof. Ooh, and it goes down. It uh, flirted a little bit with the basket, but still went in. So perfectly uh, done there by B friend. You thought they were always going to go for that fade back jumper. It's not going to work out in the end for the Fajima there. And uh, B friend gets possession of the ball. Back to Hanamichi. Here it comes. Okay, Hiroaki, there's the Euro step into the pass once again. Hiroaki here onto the frame here. He has to go for the shot here. Hanamichi already back onto the point. Where's the tipper back in? He could have actually just put it back if he wanted to. They do get control of the ball once again, but this is taking a lot of time. But the way wide open shot into the three pointer. Hiroaki stepping up again with the three, showing an MVP form. But Yone tries to answer with the three of their own, and now. Here, Hanamichi picking up steam on that rebounding end. This just goes to show that you can't be always impatient. That, uh, you know, you have a couple of seconds on that clock. Use all of it. Now, are they going to be able to go through the defenders? Ooh. He does. Yeah, there was a lot of contact there, but still able to finish on the jam. Oh, that's all we want to see, right? Able to posterize your opponents. That's how you do it. Okay. Fade back jumper once again for the three point, a little bit too greedy, but I like the premise there that they're trying to do. Once again, Hanamichi P Star back on the the board for being able to have this, these ridiculous rebounds. In any case, though, they're really trying to spread the defense thin with these uh, nice little uh, dive or sorry ankle breaker plays, but it's not going to work out in the end. Fade back jumper not going to connect. Uh, Hanamiji picking up those rebounds, just gobbling them up, and, and another three-pointer by Hiroaki, stepping it up, bringing them back into the lead, and it's up by two. Pressure back on Yone. I guess that's why he's called Hiroaki, right? Because he got the <laughs> hero play set in motion. Three points to win, Yone two points to a tie, and now we're both neck and neck. One minute on that timer here, ladies and gents. Goes back once again. If this three his three pointer connect, I will just go back and cry in a corner because this guy is too <laughs> good. You know, actually, no, Fujima opens up and actually leaves the defenders in the dust. Wow, Yone is just taking control of that and coming back into the lead. Clutch play. Sendo has not really find his stride here, only as a blocker. And look at these Euro steps, able to just break some ankles. Sendo going to try to do once again, and he dunks it in. But that is two ultimates just for a two-pointer. Yeah, you were just saying Sendo wasn't affecting the game. He just showed it right there, but damn, Yone right back. 
with the dunk to take the lead. 39 seconds left in the game. A highlight reel to say at the least. Gonna try to just go around here. Okay, let's see what Fajima can do. They're just playing keep away here. And someone has to try to steal this ball because that time is being wasted left and right. Back onto Nobunaga, back onto Uomi, oh, Uzumi. They didn't block away the dunk there. And here's a chance, here's a chance. 15 seconds on the clock and they're trying to steal the ball with the green light immediately. They're frantically trying to play keep away with the ball, but they're behind in terms of the points. And now it almost gets stolen. Here we go, trying to go about it. Here's the Hanamichi Sakuragi dunk. And they get the advantage. Five seconds on the clock. No, not advantage, sorry. Tie on the points. Five seconds left on the clock. Fujima with the shot to win it all. And it doesn't. We're going back to overtime. We started with overtime today. And we're going to end this last game with the first overtime session. And what a way this has been for both teams. Bifren and Yone playing their hearts out. Oh man, being able to trap your uh, ultimate is definitely a big, oh, big thing. And Hero Aki just swishes another three pointer. Man, those things just look so satisfying to be able to do. In any case, though, back onto the attackers here from Yone. Is that going to be able to connect? Yes, it does. Nobody from the rebounders was able to snag the ball away. But one point ahead is Bet Befriend going to be. Yes, yeah, still the advantage with B-Friend because of those three-pointers by Hiroaki. Let's see if they go back to him. And there we go, Hiroaki with the ultimate. And he drops it in. Hiroaki, more like Hiroako. I don't know if that's a Takalo phrase that we can do. That is. Yes, <laughs> sir. B-Friend now up by three. Oh, man. Ah. Right back at you with the dunk. We're not going away easily. Both teams still in it. The one point game, 20 seconds left. Let's see what Befriend has left in their tanks. This Euro steps into the passes, my goodness. Uh, Sendo has really yet to kind of do anything, but he broke the ankle. Wide out shot, and Hanamichi comes back to the oh. Three points, eight seconds left on the clock. Hanamichi has been so important, and he shows up again, but a three point game, five seconds left. Fujima, will he do it? Can't find his way to the three point line. Tomorrow the stakes will be a bit higher. First 